Hey there, this is James Darknell, the Mutant Pixel, and I got a Moto tutorial for you today. Today I want to talk to you about a common problem a lot of users have when upgrading from one version to another or moving to a service pack or something like that. A lot of times you've made some customizations to your file and you want to move those over to the new version and it's not easy to do that. So I want to talk to you about the technique that I've developed over the years. I'm sure other people do the same thing. There's probably even other videos out there, but I just want to show you my technique for, for saving out product uh, preferences and setups and customized settings that you've applied to Moto. So my recommendation is to save them all out as individual files. So I'm going to show you really quickly how we're going to do that. So I've just opened up Moto 902, and this is Service Pack 1. And I should mention that if you're using 902, I really recommend you update to the Service Pack 1 because really late after a release, there was a really bad file corruption issue that was uncovered and we fixed it as fast as we could and we got that update out there. So I really recommend that you're using 902 SP1 if you're using 902. All right, so let's jump in here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna I'm just gonna set up some of my preferences. So there's certain things that I like to set in the preferences file every time and if I ever have to you know, for instance, delete my config file or update to a new service pack or new version. It's a pain having to go in and set those up every time. So I'm going to go in here first off to image IO and my default image format is PNG 16. I pretty much save everything in that format when I'm working on stuff. You might have a different format that you like to use. So you can just select whatever one you prefer. And then just by making that one change, I'm going to close the preferences file. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to the config export option under the file menu. And what this is going to do is this is going to get me into the configs folder and anything in this folder is just going to automatically get loaded into Moto every time it opens, regardless of what version it is, anything about it. So I'm going to call this file default image format and then if you want we can say that's a pref for that thing we're gonna hit save so this is basically the image name that we just gave it and the fragment basically means where is this coming from in your config file so you can either zero in on specific things that you might have changed so if you've changed a, uh, a layout if you've changed a specific form preferences I can select preferences in here but since really I just opened up the program and I only made one change I could just save all and it probably get the same results so the append to file option that would what that does is if there is the same name here of a folder a file already in the folder it would just append this to that file without overwriting it uh, and then the import resulting file just basically makes that part of the existing config in the memory so it's imported and working uh, in your scene. I, I'm, I've never come up with a, across a reason to not import the resulting file. So anyways, just click OK on that and that creates the file. So now I'm going to close Moto here and the reason I am closing Moto, I'm going to open that back up here, is the way that the config export does is it basically does a difference on what was saved to disk versus what's in memory because Moto doesn't actually write out the current config file till it's exited. So sometimes you might find that if you make some changes to the interface and then you open and close Moto and then a week later you decide, oh, I want to export that config, it's not going to export it because it's already become part of that, that config file that's saved to disk. So now we go into the preferences we can select something else uh, let's see what else do we want to change here how about my auto save I want the auto save to be every 20 minutes so I'm gonna go here we're gonna go down to config export and this one's gonna be called auto save 20 And another preference. We're not overwriting anything, so I'm just going to accept the defaults there. 
So and it's also a good idea if you have a text editor of some sort. I'm going to go in here to the configs just to open these guys up. So if I go in here to the default image format, you can see that that just has that one preference option in there, image format name PNG 16. Let's look up at the other one, autosave 20. Yeah, so autosave time 20. So we know that the autosave was 15 and the image preference uh, default was Targa to TGA files. So now we're going to do a quick little uh, experiment. And this is a folder every Moto user should be familiar with. That's the user folder. And this is where your configs and your you know, backups, all that sort of stuff, uh, is all saved into. So this is uh, on Windows, is App Data Roaming Luxology. Uh, and then this is the user folder. So this is your license. This is your, your base config file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close Moto first because it writes the config file that's in memory. So if you delete it and then close Moto, it's just going to create what's already in its memory. And it's going to be basically as if you didn't delete it all. So let's close Moto. Let us delete this stuff. And we can look in the config folder. That's where we just saved these two config fragments. And our autosave 20 in default image format pref is in there. So let's minimize that. So now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to open up Moto. And we're going to get the same sort of stuff that we get every single time. No, yes, don't show, go away. And then I will resize this so you can actually see what I'm doing. This is the perils of having high resolution monitor. All right, so now we know precisely that this was a came out of a fresh, you know, deleted config, you know, this could be the equivalent of having a new version. But if we go into our system preferences here and we look at the let's say the autosave that's defaulted now to 20 and I go to my image IO it's telling me my default image format is PNG 16. So I didn't have to manually go in and set up those preferences for that. And basically you could go in and set up a pie menu and you could export that out. You could set up, you know, a custom layout, you know, any sort of thing that you can customize in Moto, you can export out in your config export. And I do recommend that once you export them out, that if you're feeling up to it, at least, uh, that you check them out in a text editor to make sure that some extra stuff didn't get up in there. I mean, if you really sort of pay attention to it, it's not that hard to sort of figure out what all of the stuff in there is talking about. Uh, and then I really, really recommend that you do them one piece at a time and just close Moto each time. So open it up, change a preference, export it out, close Moto, open it up, change something else, export it out, close Moto. And basically what's going to happen by doing these little pieces, eventually you're going to come across some sort of a time when Moto's going to crash opening. And you can basically rename the config folder and move all or move all of those configs out of there. And then if Moto opens up, you can say, hey, OK, it's one of my configs that's cr crashing Moto because you know that, you know, some preference or something changed somewhere and it's just getting some information it's not expecting. That's causing an error. It's causing a hang, some sort of problem like that. So that you could move them in half at a time. OK, this half of them is crashing them. It, it basically just gives you an option to sort of do some troubleshooting when they're one at a time. So that way you don't have to go back and remake all of your configs again when you find out that your config file that you're importing is crashing Moto. So it's really super tedious to do it that first time, admittedly. But once you've done it, you should never have to do it again. So anyways, that is my custom way of exporting config files. So I hope you found that useful, and uh, thanks for watching.